Okay, so we're looking just at the uh, compactness of the engine compartment. Here you have a V8 uh, 3.5 litre engine and either side packed into the, the crevices are fuel tank here, fuel tank on the far side, carburetors up on top and on this side we have uh, ducts for the heating and so forth because this vehicle was prepared prepared for use in winter conditions so it had additional features but these 3.5 litre engines were unusual in that they had four cylinder heads uh, two for each side so each two cylinders had a cylinder head um, but it's a very modern engine for its period and uh, as I said it's uh, a Hork engine so it's part of the Audi group but one of the problems that anybody like the Wheel Foundation has in restoring these is there are so few of these engines left so in the case of uh, we have one that's fully ready to go and a second one where we need to cast one cylinder head of the four and then uh, another engine which may we have a transaction going on where we may have an engine available or we may actually cast a new engine but it's down at that level that you have to go when you're restoring a vehicle but in the next two years we'll see three of these running around uh, in action in the wheel foundation and uh, we these guys are very helpful in Fort Benning they've allowed us to look for new information and details and so forth and in return I think we've been able to help them a little, little bit. Uh, for example, this wee turret that's on the top, uh, the shoot shield, um, I was able to identify a person in Europe who had that, and the Fort Knox people managed to buy it from him. So that restored a little bit back, but lots of other things will follow. Awesome. Good. Am I all the way down? Uh, well, you're, 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 the pedals are up above. Yeah, so this is the problem, you have to get used to yeah. quite some... There's no tricky. chair, so I have Yeah, yeah, I mean, it would be a little bit taller, but not much. Yeah. Not okay. much. Interesting. So the driver sits here and the radio yeah. operator is here. The radio operator is here. He would have had a seat as well, naturally, a little bit more off the ground. And uh, he operates... This is the where the radio set would go normally for the uh, communication with other vehicles. At this period, which is 1942, he's able to talk to the other vehicles. So he's not depending on the commander hmm. reading flag signals coming from other vehicles. The transformer for the radio is down there beside my foot. And then if I want to talk to my command, I have to, well, I have to turn the knobs on this to tune in to where the the tr inbound transmissions coming from headquarters mm. would be received on a set that's in here and then my big transmitter is up here so it's kind of a tricky enough operation you're driving uh, the vehicle forward perhaps and uh, you know so this bumping around but generally for good quality transmission in those days they they stopped and they they ran the radios while the vehicle was stationary mm because obviously their radio sets were much more primitive in those days than they are today. Okay, so maybe um, we have a look here. This is the uh, vision block protection for the uh, driver. Normally he could see through that. This one is opaque at the moment because it hasn't been restored. Um, but if it wasn't in combat, he could uh, lift a lever and this all would open up. And you, you had this little slot for looking out so that's how you were supposed to see the road. You can't actually see what's going on down below. So it's pretty scary stuff. You have a vision block on either side, or and you can either even in in a non-combat situation you can open that and you can use that little slot, or if it, you're in combat you have a glass block and you can see out through the little slit that's actually above Sophie's head there. Now um, the commander is operating behind. Well, I'll go back into the... I'm now in the commander's position, uh, but what's missing in this uh, museum exhibit is that the machine gun mount would be here. It's a pedestal with the machine gun on top. And this is not a turret in the strict sense. This is a shoot shield. It's just a shield for the machine gun, and it moves based on the pedestal here. And the commander sat on a little sa bike saddle, and he moved around with his feet and there's a little footrest here for him to help maneuver around into position. Um, the ammunition is on either side, the machine gun 
ammunition bags are stored here and on this side is where into this slot here up through a hole in the roof is where they put the big tall antenna for the long distance transmission at the back here we have the radiator and uh, the fuel tank filling is in there all very cramped so if you have three people sometimes you even have four people in these vehicles and it's extremely crowded the radio vehicle the 261 which is the final version of this came in 43 and they dispensed with the machine gun and they dispensed with all of this stuff and put more space in for for their uh, extra radios and a, a four-man crew uh, with a they even had a desk in here for uh, working on that and then here we have the radiator and in cold weather they uh, had this this is a, a roller blind uh, down at the bottom here that you could roll the blind up and connect it in front to block the flow of air from the radiator um, so that's about all for internal that we, we need to worry about. I mean, in the uh, wheel foundation, we, we, as I say, we have one of these being restored, uh, exactly the same configuration as this in terms of radio vehicle. So it'll be real fun to have that going, running around uh, in a, a year or two's time.